have one of Charlotte Rotary's favorite program, How I Got to Where I'm At. If you were a How I Got to Where I'm At speaker, raise your hand. Okay, so the two of you are in great company. I was all excited for this. I, this morning I got my green and my yellow and my red paper because we had it all timed out and we had to be done by 1.30 and then Blair got sick, so we can throw that out the window. And you guys get to speak as long as you want, as long as we are out of here by 1.30. So help me welcome you, Nadine. so that I know how long it takes, because I don't want to shortchange Al. I now know how we were selected with the only two left in the room who haven't done this before. I'm afraid, as I saw all the hands go up. It's an honor to be here, and interesting how things happen, never by accident, I say. The joke of the day seems to be Ohio, which is where I'm from. <laughs> so I'm a, you can take the girl out of the Buckeye State, but you cannot take the Buckeye out of the girl. I grew up in a very small town called Uricksville, Ohio, about 45 minutes south of the Canton area. Football Hall of Fame? Any Football Hall of Famers? Good, 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 good. Okay. See, they always say nobody's left in Ohio, we all left. So, and they all live here in the south because your weather is so much better than uh, the weather up north. And I've been here about a little over a year and it's an honor to have the opportunity to be the general manager of WTDI PBS Charlotte, a proud viewer supported service of Central Piedmont Community College. And it's a great opportunity. This is an amazing city. You all know that. That's why you live here. And I'm glad to be a transplant to here. But how do you get from a little bitty town in Uricksville, Ohio, to be a general manager of a PBS station in Charlotte, North Carolina? Well, it all starts with a dream, I always say. <laughs> we all have dreams. And I love to encourage young people and to mentor young people to follow their dreams because I am living proof that dreams really do come true. Uh, Uricksville, Ohio, population 3,800. I graduated my high school senior class with about 150 other students. Nobody dreamed of being on television in Uricksville, Ohio, because there were no television stations in Uricksville, Ohio. The closest one was probably several hundred miles away in Cleveland, Ohio. My parents were divorced. My mom was a nurse. And from her perspective, the only options you had for a career you could be a school teacher or you could be a nurse. Since I was scared to death of blood, I was not going to be a nurse. And so by default, I would be a school teacher. But from the time I was in the first grade, I was a writer. And I wrote my first play in the first grade and my friend made finger puppets and we acted it out in the class. In the third grade, I won my first essay contest. And I won essay contests all through elementary and high school, winning a statewide contest my senior year of high school, but I still thought I had to be a school teacher because no one in Uricksville, Ohio went on to be on television. I grew up every day sitting on my grandfather's lap watching the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Any Walter Cronkite fans in the crowd? My grandfather one day said, buddy, you could do that. And I said, okay, grandpa, I will. And a dream was born. And my love and passion for people and for storytelling just I couldn't put it down, but my mom just kept telling me, this is just a hobby. You can't make a living, and you're not going to live in our basement for the rest of your life. So you've got to get that degree in education. Lucky for me, a wonderful educator got in my life as a, my senior year, and uh, Mrs. Swinderman, our guidance counselor, said, Amy, you've always been in theater. You've always been a writer and a storyteller. You really can make a living as a broadcast journalist, and you've got to go to broadcast school of which I went home and had a, the worst fight with my mother ever. And she said, I don't want to waste my money sending you away to college to have you live in the basement. I took it as a challenge, and I said, I will never come back and live in the basement. And I pretty much never came back. I went away to Bowling Green State University in Northwest Ohio and worked incredibly hard, had many struggles, learned how to be tenacious, which I think is something everyone in this room has probably had to do. Tenacity is our best friend some days because failure is not an option. As long as, I always say, the only failure in life is not trying. We may not always hit the bullseye, but as long as we pull back and take that shot, we've tried and we can learn from our mistakes 
and we can't succeed. So I'm a senior in college now, and this is where the rubber meets the road. I do not want to go back to Bureauxville, Ohio, and hear my mother say, I told you so, so I pray really hard. God, please help me find a job in television. I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything. It doesn't matter how small. There are 210 television markets across the country. Number one is New York City. That's the largest. Number 210 is Alpena, Michigan, which seems to be the other butt of the joke. I started out in market 198, Zanesville, Ohio. Be careful what you pray for. I should have been more specific. I should have prayed for something a little bigger. But truly, the experience that I had in Zanesville, Ohio, I learned how to do everything. To shoot, to write, to edit, to put together the newscasts. I was lucky enough to be the 6 and 11 o'clock anchor in an NBC affiliate in Ohio, albeit as small as it was. Uh, it was 198 then. It has now since dropped. Everyone's leaving Ohio, I mentioned. It's market 204. So it's gotten worse. Spent two years there and entered the Tar Heel State on my first tour of duty down east in Greenville, North Carolina. Arr! Woo Go Pirates! <laughs> so, where I was the noon anchor and medical reporter. Spent three years down east. I was silly and I was young and I thought I missed the north and I missed snow. So, I took that next opportunity in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, working for a national syndicator of medical news. And I traveled the country for four years interviewing doctors and researchers and had the most amazing opportunity to learn and to grow. And working for a production company, you really had to have a fantastic product because they sold that product and it was on a, a show that was nationally syndicated called Health Matters, which was actually on here in the Charlotte market. I was a reporter and an anchor for Health Matters, loved traveling, had the incredible, remember I grew up in a tiny town in York, Ohio. The only place I had ever been on vacation was Orlando one time. We vacationed in Sandusky to go to Cedar Point. So here all of a sudden someone's paying me and flying me all over the country and I had great opportunities uh, to interview researchers in Chicago and Los Angeles and Honolulu, Hawaii and everywhere in between. And so I learned and I grew and I got yelled at by news directors and I've been told I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I'll never make it. Silly them. They didn't know. They didn't know that Winston Churchill was one of my favorite men on earth and his quote that I love and hold near and dear to my heart is never, ever, ever give up. Young people, when I have the opportunity to talk to them and I always, they say, how do I know what I should do with the rest of my life? And I always say, the best careers are those where your talent intersects your passion. For me, it was writing, storytelling, talking to people, and I moved around as a reporter and an anchor as a syndicator of medical news, and then I got that great opportunity in 1999, answered a national ad to be the executive producer of a public television station. I was tired of covering hurricanes down east and uh, hostage ordeals. It was amazing how Greenville had three hostage ordeals in three years. I had never seen anything like that before. And I worked my way up through the ranks. Quality and excellence was what life was all, all about. Our commitment here at WTBI PBS Charlotte is to the four E's. I adopted that a long time ago. We're about excellence, efficiency, effectiveness, and entrepreneurship. As we became excellent at that PBS station outside of Philadelphia, a little bit our north of Philadelphia, I was honored to lead teams to six regional Emmy Awards. We went from that little station that had a reputation of where good careers go to die to a station where we launched careers. And I'm honored to have mentored young people who are now working in New York City, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Atlanta. And I love sewing into others. And I love leadership. You know, I learned the hard way. I made a lot of mistakes in leadership and I turned to reading and to books. I love John Maxwell books and Failing Forward is one of my favorites. I told you I don't believe in failure. So I read the book and I did a little training for my staff, but I retitled John Maxwell's New York Times best-selling book and called it Searching for Success because I just couldn't swallow the word failure. We were able to do some great things together. When we were committed to excellence at that PBS station outside Philadelphia, money followed. Service to success really did work and that commitment to excellence allowed me to help the station to raise a lot of money. Once I raised a lot of money, I got a lot of opportunities 
to move my way up, and I wasn't just in charge of production. I was in charge of engineering, I was in charge of programming, they put me in charge of fundraising. And I made a dream, I had a dream and a goal to be the general manager of a television station. Now, I thought it would be that television station in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, but I wasn't specific again in my prayer. I just wanted to be a general manager. That opportunity didn't happen there. Once again, I answered a national ad to be a general manager here at WTBI, PBS Charlotte, a service of Central Piedmont Community College, and I'm so honored that they picked me. And I'm so honored to be able to be with each and every one of you because you know Charlotte's an amazing town and it deserves an amazing public television station. And I'm committed to helping this station serve this community in a way that we believe if we serve well, we will be supported financially by each and every person in this room, I hope, and throughout the entire 13 county region that we serve. We want to spotlight the good things going on. We want to tell the stories that no one else will tell in a very in-depth, very informative, educational and engaging way. I'm grateful for your time. I'm grateful for the opportunity to just sort of share, but dreams really do come true. I'm living proof, and I'm grateful to be a part of this group as well.